Welcome to the new Now Next podcast, produced by the Asia chapter of the Asian American Journalists Association. We are a community of journalists, academics, entrepreneurs, and students across the world who are committed to advancing diversity in the news industry and promoting the highest standards of journalism. Each year, AJA Asia holds its annual New Now Next media conference, and Recon, to bring together members from across Asia. My name is Yehun. And I'm Cheryl, and this is an episode in the podcast series leading up to our 2022 conference. Featuring the theme, Covering a Disruptive World, we explore what it means to be journalists in times of conflict, crisis, and reform. Today, we're honored to have Sonny Sway, one of the most courageous fighters for press freedom in our time. Sonny is the founder and CEO of Frontier Myanmar. Frontier is an independent online magazine known for its in-depth, and investigative stories about Myanmar. To escape the junta's crackdown on media, Sonny's team recently relocated their newsroom to Thailand. They're currently reporting remotely from Chiang Mai. Sonny, thank you very much for joining us today. I want to start our conversation today with a question about your country. It's been more than a year since the coup in Myanmar, and perhaps because of so many crises in other parts of the world, it's not getting the attention that it deserves. What is it like in Myanmar? Have the circumstances improved or worsened compared to a year ago? Oh, wow. Uh, It's a a good question. Panels all the time. Uh, Since Ukraine war uh, started, I think Myanmar was completely uh, underreported. Especially there is pretty much no Myanmar stories in Europe at, at this point. So thank you for this question. The situation now has been worse rather than getting better. You know, when we study physics, there is a rule that when something is descending, uh, it will always see the floor and always bounce back. So Myanmar's situation hasn't seen the floor yet, uh, resistance yet, right? So it's still going down and the situation's not getting better and I don't see any immediate improvement uh, or anything slowing down in the near future. So there will be more and more fighting and there will be more and more bombing uh, airstrikes, a lot of ambushes, a lot of killing, a lot of torture, a lot of arsoning. And they're basically burning people alive. So you can imagine how bad it is in Myanmar. So the situation is still really, really bad. Uh, compared to last year, it's even worse than last year now. That is quite disheartening to hear. Um, the fact that the situation is worsening that makes Frontier's mission even more relevant and critical for Myanmar. For our readers who may not be familiar with uh, Frontier, could you tell us what it does and what is Frontier's mission? Oh, thank you. Yes, I uh, will do. So we just turned seven years. The 1st of July, a few days ago, uh, Frontier it's um, turned seven years old. So we launched in July 2020. And since the launch, the Frontier has a transaction from a weekly magazine focused on news and current affairs to Myanmar's leading independent English language publication uh, with a regional reputation for the high quality, long form and uh, investigative reporting. So we used to have a print version, but Due to the current political crisis, we had to kill print and we are now 100% digital. Uh, Our mission is to be a rare, unbiased voice and standing for transparency, accountability and inclusivity. Even as the country's political climate has deteriorated significantly, affecting the ability of Myanmar media outlets to provide balance and coverage on the topics important to Myanmar's current crisis and used to be Myanmar's democratic transaction. So that's the role that we play. You mentioned that Frontier produces English contents. Who's your target audience and how do you hope to influence them? Our target it's quite niche. It's basically diplomats, NGOs, business leaders, journalists, and uh, academics. So basically, people with money, people with education, all the movers and shakers, basically, yeah, decision makers. So we are very lucky to have these layer as our core readers. You said Frontier is not doing print anymore. Uh, you're going fully digital. In your opinion, how does the emergence and rise of internet news affect media freedom? Are they related? Oh boy. So let's talk about Myanmar. 
uh, Myanmar landscape. In 2012-2013, when the government privatized the telecommunication sector, you know, all the international players come in, like uh, Norway's, how do you say, what's it called, uh, D-Tech in Thailand, Oridu from UAE, Telenor from Oslo, and MTT Dokumo from Japan, Vietel from Vietnam. So they all came in and invested in Myanmar. So since then, you know, the way people consume the news has completely changed. And that's how, you know, like what happened globally, the print basically very difficult to survive. And most of the mainstream medias uh, basically disappear, especially because of the pandemic and because of the coup. Social media nowadays in Myanmar has been very toxic. I just can't read Facebook every day now because it's really giving me negative vibes and make me depressed and stuff like that. So it's all about digital media now. The print medias are basically very little print media houses are surviving. And I would say 98% of the print media has gone basically, right, because of the economic problems and the political problems. So digital media has been everywhere and very powerful and set to see that they are not, not very responsible and accountable as they should. The news industry is very competitive and there are bigger newsrooms with more resources. Uh, so how does Frontier differentiate itself from other news media? Well, basically uh, two things. Uh, three things. I would say that, first of all, the way we report, it's very rare investigative newsrooms in Myanmar. And I think we are one of the very few. A lot of people focus on hard news and breaking news. Uh, we don't do that. We just stick to our investigative pieces. And we do cross-border stories. Uh, we work with different media outlets in Europe, especially in Denmark and Germany, and uh, we tackle all the social issues and, and human rights abuses in Myanmar, and then we run these articles globally, basically. Also, we, you know, since the 1st of February 2021, after the military coup, most of the medias uh, either went underground or went into exile. So we are one of the exile medias. We also left Myanmar October 2021 and we successfully relocated in uh, Thailand. So we are operating from Thailand now. Even before the coup, even during the pandemic, we never change our voice, our tone. We stick to our stand, where we stand, and uh, we stick to our tone. Most of the news outlets, I think, now seem sway to activism. Because, of course, everyone is very upset with how Hunta is treating uh, the citizen of Myanmar. You know, everyone is against military at this point. So you will see a lot of activism we are reporting while we keep our journalism still now. So even before the coup and now during the coup, after the coup, we haven't changed our tone. We are as critical as we were. So that's another thing. I would say the third thing is that we managed to build a community, you know, so this community has been basically helped supporting our reporting, our, our newsroom. We managed to launch our memberships program only one month before the pandemic. And that's how we stay ahead of the curves. I think that's the difference between uh, Frontier and its peers. We switch from old school advertising-based revenue model to reader's revenue model. So that's another thing that we did. And yeah, we stick to our strength, which is long-form uh, reporting. We are also playing the role that making this community happy and solving their problems on the daily basis. So that's what we are doing at the moment. You mentioned being an exile media, meaning you got out of Myanmar and now you're reporting remotely. What were the challenges that you were facing uh, that made you decide moving out of the country was the solution? Well, um, everything. First of all, uh, um, most importantly, above everything else is the security of our journalists, right? So since after the coup, I think nine to 11 media outlets printing license were revoked. 
and also military started changing the regulations in terms of online and internet regulations and basically it's getting very very dangerous for for everyone to even post something on the facebook and then they were really after uh, online publishing and i saw a uh, two of my reporters get the gunshots one with the life bullet another with the, the rubber bullets and one of our uh, regular columnists get arrested our managing director get arrested sent to insane prison and then the military started raiding my reporters uh, houses so that's when we decided that we need to leave and we just need to to report the way we report and staying in Yangon would be very very risky for all of us that's the reason the safety is the reason that forced us to relocate that sounds uh, very scary personally i really appreciate newsrooms like frontier because it's actually one of the very few voices that we get from myanmar and uh, one of the only ways we can hear about myanmar in these times of crises uh, heavy regulations and persecution so my question to you is what has been a rewarding part about running frontier community I think for past 12, 14, 15 months, it's a constant struggle. You know, there is a selling in, in, in the tough situation, only the toughest survive. And we try our best to balance the whole situation because, I mean, can you imagine, you know, we were having a second wave of pandemic, which is a Delta virus. In Myanmar, a lot of people lose their lives because of Delta. It's been very, it did a lot of damage to, to our society. On top of that, Delta, it's a coup. So that make everyone united as a whole. I'm very lucky to have my team who are always very, the team is very supportive. We are always on the same page. We are always heading to the same direction. So it really counts when we go through a lot of problems. And we managed to just stick to each other as, as a whole, as a team. And then we went through all the uh, difficulties. So I think the bonding is very, very important. This is nothing like like the ordinary times. This is a very tough times and uh, we really supported each other. The second thing is to see this amazing report from the community that we have successfully built. And without the community, I don't think we would be able to survive. And I think that's for sure. And I think that's the two main things that I get. I think we are a lot more tech savvier because the technology, it's a remote <laughs> publishing. And we are all spread out to seven, eight different time zones. You know, we are operating from all over the world. We managed to basically put everything together and resume our reporting as even before the coup. So I think everybody worked really hard. Everybody understand each other very well. Most importantly, our readers, our communities understand what we are going through and be supported all the way. So it's very good to see that sort of uh, achievement while we are in really big trouble. I want to hear more about your team. Uh, could you tell us a little more about the bond and support in your team? How is your team supporting one another? So Frontier, we don't have any exile experience, unlike other media organizations. So we don't really know what to expect. For example, like I thought uh, relocation is going to be very easy because I still have my same team and the same publication. It's still a Frontier, right? But it turned out to be completely different because this is a new country, different restrictions that we have to be aware of, different rules and regulations that we have to follow. I think the most challenging part for me is to motivate everyone to get back to, to normal and report. It's almost impossible because with the combination of the coup and the pandemic, we had to suspend almost six months. So after six months, you know, everything is always difficult to resume, especially when we fled, we run away, right? Everybody had to run and everybody had to leave the family behind. So in the beginning days are always difficult because of the homesickness. We don't speak Thai language. We, you know, some of my team don't speak 
good English. To be honest, some of my team members don't even know how to use uh, Google Map. So everything is so new for everyone. Now we are a big family away from the family. You know what I'm saying? We just need to stick to each other, support each other professionally, personally. When we get sick, we, we really have to take care of each other. Stuff like that. I think that's very plus side for us. And we stay close to each other. We cook together. We eat together. We see each other. We go out on the weekends together. We hang out. You know, stuff like that. So it, it's uh, something like you're going back to the university, you know, away from home. And then you end up meeting, making new friends. And then, you know, same thing, right? This team become a very close family. So it's a really good thing to see. You seem like you're very grateful to have your team, but I can tell you that your team is very lucky to have a leader like you. Oh, no, no. I am luckier than, than my team to, to have my team. <laughs> so before uh, starting Frontier, you went through some very difficult times in your career. Uh, you were in prison for more than eight years. You faced persecution, and I, I imagine the hardest part now would be having to see your team in danger. Uh, so, Sonny, what keeps you going? Correct. Well, I've been there. I've done it. Prison is where you don't want to be. Trust me. So every decision that we make, we make collectively as a team. You know, it's always good to have someone with a prison experience. So I know when, I think I know two, three steps ahead of everyone when and where the danger is. Also, most importantly, how to, to survive in prison. Prison survival is also very important. So I always keep my team in the full alert, telling them even when they get rested, what are the expectations that they should have and what are the worst case scenarios that they should be expecting, uh, stuff like that. Whenever someone get arrested or detained, I just stop the whole operation and tell everyone to run. <laughs> because the security risk is, is the highest among us at the moment. Why am I still keep on going? Well, it's very important to do what we do, especially time like this. I mean, there are millions of rumors going around on social media. People are panicking. People are very scared. People are very confused. We need to basically make sure that we are reporting a very factual articles and, you know, it's important to dig deep as close as possible to truth, right? This is very important for all of us to keep on continuing what we do. You know, the country needs a good publication. Our reader needs good and accurate publication. And there is no way we will back off at this time. So we left the country seven months ago and we are nearly full swing now back to normal. Good to see a lot of engagements happening again. Good to see my team is happy in Thailand. They are reporting in, in full skill. Uh, even I see a lot of improvements individually since after we negotiation. So we all understand that this is the time that we work really hard. Stay close to the country, stay close to the, to, to the family as close as possible and do our job. We will never easily fade away even though we are seeing a lot of challenges we have gone through uphill battles and there are plenty more and the only thing that we can do is to fight and go through as a team and and my team also understand that very well there is no stopping point we're going to continue reporting whatever it takes that's what we're going to do one last question i have for you today is for our student members and aspiring journalists I'm a student and I want to be a journalist myself. Is there a word of advice you would give to students who want to get into journalism as a career? Yes. Thank you for that question. Yes. Uh, the world needs you. Your country needs you more than ever. Just let's stick to the truth because the truth is all matters. We need to reveal the truth, and that's why you are here for. Some people are abusing social media at this time. For young, new blood journalists, those of whom just graduated or who those of whom are about to graduate, you have to be aware that our competitors are not 
other news outlets. Our competitors are Netflix, Hulu. Whoever try to grab your attention to your phone become your competitors and you're trying to, to get this a few seconds of their time. It's very important that whatever you write, you write with a very good intention and just reveal the truth. And it's important for us journalists to report what you see fit and the way you see fit and what is the truth. So the world needs you now more than ever. I'm so happy to see new journalists coming out every year and their eyes are so bright and they are so eager to work on the stories and so happy to see that. And then you're going to see a lot of ups and downs in, in this journalism career. In journalism, you either love it or you hate it, there is nothing in the middle. So hopefully you will love your career as a journalist and the role that you will be playing as a journalist is very important. So I really support you and I really appreciate what you have done in the university. So please keep on going. That's amazing. Uh, I will. Thank you, Sonny, again for joining us for our podcast today. And I really look forward to seeing you at the conference. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, see you in a couple of weeks.